hi friends. Uh, once again, we are here for neuro linguistic programming. Uh, today, we are going to discuss one of the important aspects of neuro linguistic programming that is, four stages of competence. Because under this caption, uh, it is very important to know the various competence, the types of com competence which we acquire with the help of neuro linguistic programming. So, what are these four stages of competence and what are the important part to acquire or to uh, restore uh, the competence that a person can acquire. Now, what are the four stages of competence and what do we mean by four stages of competence? So, the four stages of competence or the conscious competence learning model relates to the psychological states involved in the process of progressing from incompetence to competence in the development of a skill. So, this is a psychological a state of mind that how you move from incompetence to competence and if you have incompetence level high, how to decrease it to increase competence level. Now, unconscious competence that is the first in which you know that you can do it and you can do it without thinking too hard about it. Then you know that is conscious competence, you know that you can do it, but it takes constant concentration that is conscious competence. Then unconscious incompetence that is you do not know what you do not know. You have no idea that you are no good at it. And then finally, conscious incompetence in which you know that you are no good at it. Now, the uses of this four stages of competence, the conscious competence ladder is useful in several ways. Because the first as I uh, discussed with you, the first is unconscious incompetence. So, the conscious competence ladder is useful in several ways. First, you can use it to understand the emotions you will experience during the learning process. And this helps you to stay motivated when time gets tough and it helps you to manage your expectation of success so that you do not try to achieve too much too early. For example, during the consciously unskilled phase, you can reassure yourself that while learning this skill, it is difficult and frustrating right now, things will improve in the future. And when you are unconsciously skilled, the model reminds you to value the skills that you have gained and not to be too impatient with people who have yet to get gain them. It is also useful in coaching and training situations because it allows you to be in touch with what your people are thinking and feeling. You can then help them to understand their emotions as they learn new skills and encourage them when they are feeling disillusioned. Unconscious incompetence at several occasion, I mean this is one of the four stages of competence under neuro linguistic programming. So, unconscious incompetence at several occasion it happens that the mind goes blank and the individual neither understands nor knows how to do something nor recognizes the deficit nor has a desire to address it complete blackout. In short, you do not know what you do not know, totally failure 
and in conscious incompetence what happens though the individual does not understand or know how to do something he or she does recognize at least something without yet addressing it unlike unconscious incompetence. In such a state of mind one can point out what you do not know. Now again conscious competence one of the third stage the individual understands or knows how to do something. However, demonstrating the skill or knowledge requires a great deal of consciousness or concentration. One knows how to do it, but one has to think one's way through it. Unconscious competence. The individual had so much practice with a skill that it becomes second nature and can be performed easily often without concentrating too deeply. This is the stage where one can do it as a matter of a stride without thinking. Now applying various model to gain the level of consciousness and to decrease the level of unconscious incompetence. Now let us consider each level in more detail and highlight strategies, planning, ways that you can use to move yourself through each stage successfully as you learn a new skill. Now level 1 which is unconsciously unskilled. Now at this level you are blissfully ignorant. You have a complete lack of knowledge and skills in a specific area and you are unaware of this. Your confidence therefore far exceeds your abilities. To move out of level 1 use tools like personal SWOT SWOT. What does it mean? A strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats means know your strength, know your weaknesses, grab opportunities and beware of threats. So use tool like personal SWOT analysis and training needs assessment to identify your strengths and weaknesses and to understand which skills you need to learn. As part of this ask other people for their input regarding your strength as well as your weaknesses so that you can uncover weaknesses or you can point out weaknesses and you may try for the skill that you might otherwise miss. What makes a strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats that is SWOT especially powerful is that with a little thought it can help you uncover or to find out opportunities that you would not otherwise have pointed out uh, and by understanding in your weaknesses you can manage and eliminate threats that might otherwise hurt your ability to move forward. Now to move out of level 1 use tools like personal sort, strength, weaknesses, opportunity, threats, analysis and the training needs assessment to identify your strength and weaknesses and to understand which skills you need to learn. As part of this ask other people for their input regarding your strength and your weaknesses so that you can uncover weaknesses and skill needs that you might otherwise miss. Now what makes SWOD especially powerful is that with a little thought it can help you uncover or to point out opportunities that you would not otherwise have pointed out and by understanding your weaknesses you can manage and eliminate threats that might otherwise hurt your ability to move forward. Now how to use these tools the tool that is called SWOT. Now knowing your strength, so what advantage do you have that others do not have? For example, skills, uh, 
certification, education or connection. So try to find out the strength you have. What do you do better than anyone else? What personal resources can you access? What do other people and your boss in particular see as your strength? Which of your achievements are uh, you most proud of? What values do you believe in that of uh, others fail to exhibit? Are you part of a network that no one else is involved in? If so, what connections do you have with influential people? Now consider this from your own perspective and from the point of view of the people around you. And don't be modest or shy. Be as objective as you can knowing and using your strengths can make you happier and more fulfilled at work. Now weaknesses. Try to find out weaknesses that you have. And that will, this will, I mean trying to uh, know your weaknesses that will give you the power the strength. So, what are the weaknesses? What tasks do you usually avoid because you do not feel confident doing them? What will the people around you see as your weaknesses? Are you completely confident in your education and skills training? If not, where are you weakest? What are your negative work habits? For example, are you often late are you disorganized? Do you have a short temper or are you poor at handling stress? Do you have personality traits that hold you back in your field? For instance, if you have to conduct meeting on a regular basis, a fear of public speaking would be a major weakness. Again, Consider this from a personal internal perspective and an external perspective. Do other people see weakness that you do not see? Do co-workers consistently outperform you in key areas? Be realistic. It is best to face any unpleasant truths as soon as possible. Now, what are the opportunities? Because we are talking about SWOT tool to improve the competence level. So, what are the opportunities? What new technology can help you or can you get help from others or from people via the internet? Is your industry growing? If so, how can you take advantage of the current market? Do you have a network of a strategy contact to help you or offer good advice? What trends management otherwise do you see in your company and how can you take advantage of them? Are any of your competitors failing to do something important? If so, can you take advantage of their mistakes? Is there a need in your company or industry that no one is filling? Do your customers or vendors complain about something in your company? If so, could you create an opportunity by offering a solution? Now you might find useful opportunity uh, if you try to find out. So, what are the useful opportunities? Networking events, educational classes or conferences that is to say meeting people, knowing the uh, new uh, people. A colleague going on an extended leave, could you take on some of this person's project to gain experience? A new role or project that forces you to learn new skills like public speaking or international relations? A company expansion or acquisition? Do you have a specific skills like a second language that could help with the process? Look at your strengths and ask yourself whether these open up any opportunities. And look at your weaknesses and ask yourself whether you could open up opportunities by eliminating those weaknesses. Now, level 2 that is consciously unskilled. By this stage, you have discovered that you need to learn new skills.
You realize that others are much more competent than you are and that they can easily do something that you are struggling with. This level can be demoralizing, causing people to lose confidence or even give up on their learning efforts altogether. Therefore, it is important to stay positive at, at this stage. So, how to make the level high of this positive attitude? Now, use tools like affirmations that is positive sign and treasure maps to combat negative thinking and to refocus your energy on days when you feel down. Now, remember learning might be uncomfortable in the short term, but these skills will help you reach your goals and build a better life. Building self-confidence because self-confidence is also a part of positive attitude, preparing yourself for success. So, self-confidence is extremely important in almost every aspect of our lives, yet so many people struggle to find it. Sadly, this can be a vicious circle. People who lack self-confidence can find it difficult to become successful. After all, most people are reluctant to back a project that is being paced by someone who was nervous, fumbling and overly apologetic. On the other hand, you might be persuaded by someone who speaks clearly, who holds his or her head high, who answers questions assuredly and who readily admits when he or she does not know something. Confident people inspire confidence in others, their audience, their peers, their bosses, their customers and their friends. And gaining the confidence of others is one of the key ways in which a self-confident person finds success. The good news is that self-confidence really can be learned and built on. And whether you are working on your own confidence or building the confidence of people around you, it is well worth the effort. How confident do you seem to others? Your level of self-confidence can show in many ways your behavior, your body language, how you speak, what you say and so on. Look at the uh, comparative common confident behavior with behavior associated with low self-confidence. Now, it is very important to know what is self-confidence. So, in my opinion, two main things contribute to self-confidence. The first is self-efficacy and the other is self-esteem. We gain a sense of self-efficacy when we see ourselves and others similar to ourselves mastering skills and achieving goals that matter in those skills areas. The, and this is the confidence, this is the confidence that if we learn and work hard in a particular area, we will succeed. And it is this type of confidence that leads people to accept difficult challenges and persist in the fact of setbacks. Confident behavior. So, it is very important to know the confident behavior because if you are confident, naturally your physical reflection will also be confident or positive in appearance. So, doing what you believe to be right, even if others mock or criticize, you go for it. Being willing to take risks and go to extra mile to achieve better things. Admitting your mistake and learning from them. These are the confident behavior. Waiting for others to congratulate you on your accomplishments. Accepting compliments graciously. Thanks. I really worked hard on that prospect. I am pleased you recognize my efforts. So, this is the way. In a very dignified and noble way, you accept even congratulations. Now, behavior associated with low self-confidence. What are the traits when you have self low, low self-confidence? 
governing your behavior based on what other people think, it's staying in your comfort zone, fearing failure and so avoid taking risk, working hard to cover up mistakes and hoping that you can fix the problem before anyone notices, extolling your own virtues as often as possible to as many people as possible, dismissing compliments offhandedly. Oh, that prospects was nothing really anyone could have done it. Low conf self confidence can be self destructive and it often manifests itself as negativity. Confident people are generally more positive. They believe in themselves and their abilities and they also believe in living life to the full. Now, building self confidence how to build self confidence in one, one's personality. So, how do you build this sense of balanced self confidence founded on a firm appreciation of reality. The bad news is that there is no quick fix or 5 minute solution. The good news is that becoming more confident is readily achievable just as long as you have the focus and determination to carry things through. And what is even better is that the things you will do to build your self confidence will also build success. After all, your confidence will come from real solid achievement. No one can take this away from you. So, here are three steps to self confidence for which one can use the metaphor of a journey, preparing for your journey, setting out and accelerating towards success. Now, step one, preparing for your journey towards self confidence. So, the first step involves getting yourself ready for your journey to self confidence. You need to take is talk of where you are, think about where you want to go, get yourself in the right mindset for your journey and commit yourself to starting it and staying with it. In preparing for your journey, it is very important to do all the five things that I mentioned before. Look at what you have already achieved. Think about your life so far and list the 10 best things you have achieved in an achievement log. Perhaps you came top in an important test or exam, played a key role in an important team, produced the best sales figures in a period, did something that made a key difference in someone else's life or delivered a project that meant a lot for your business. Put these into a smartly formatted document which you can look at often and then spend a few minutes each week enjoying the success you have already had. Think about your strength, think about what is important to you and where you want to go. Next, think about the things that are really important to you and what you want to achieve in your life. Setting and achieving goals is a key part of this and real confidence comes from this. Goal setting is the process you use to set yourself targets and measure your successful hitting of those targets. And very important to follow all this is start managing your mind. At this stage, you need to start managing your mind, learn to pick up and defeat the negative self-talk which can destroy your confidence. Further, useful reading includes our article on imagery. Now, this teaches you how to use and create a strong mental images of what you will feel and experience as you achieve your major goals. There is something about doing this that makes even major goals seem achievable. And then commit yourself to success. The final part of preparing for the journey is to make a clear and unequivocal promise to yourself that you are an absolutely committed 
to your journey and that you will do all in your power to achieve it. If as you are doing it, you find doubts it's starting to surface, write them down and challenge them calmly and rationally. If they dissolve under scrutiny, that is great. However, if they are based on genuine risk, make sure you set additional goals to manage these appropriately. What is risk analysis? Because when you are in your journey to achieve competence and goal, maybe you have to face risk. So, what is risk analysis? Risk analysis is a process that helps you uh, to identify and manage potential problems that could undermine key business initiatives or project. To carry out a risk analysis, you must first identify the possible threats that you face and then estimate the likelihood that these threats will materialize. Risk analysis can be complex as you will need to draw on detailed information such as project plans, financial data, security protocols, marketing forecast and other relevant information. However, it is an essential planning tool and one that could save time, money and reputation. When to use risk analysis? Risk analysis is useful in many situations when you are planning projects or some work to help you uh, to anticipate and to neutralize possible problems. When you are deciding whether or not to move forward with a project. When you are improving safety and managing potential risks in the workplace, when you are preparing for events such as equipment or technology failure, theft, staff, sickness or natural disasters, when you are planning for changes in your environment such as new competitors coming into the market or changes to government policy. How to use risk analysis? Well, identifying it is it is a part of identifying threats. So, the first step in risk analysis is to identify the existing and possible threats that you might face. These can come from many different sources. For instance, they could be human illness, death, injury or other loss of a key individual, operational disruption to supplies and operations, loss of access to essential assets or failures in distribution, reputational loss of customers or employee confidence or damage to market reputation, procedural failures of accountability, internal systems or controls or from fraud and project going over budget taking too long on key tasks or experiencing issues with product or service quality. Now, financial like business failure, interest rate changes, technical advances in technology or from technical failure, natural weather, natural disaster, political changes in tax, public opinion, government policy, foreign influences, structural dangerous chemicals, poor lighting, falling boxes or any situations where a star products technology can be harmed. So, you can use a number of different approaches to carry out a thorough analysis, run through a list to see if any of these threats are relevant. Think about the systems, processes or structures that you use and analyze risks to any part of these. Now, ask others who might have different perspectives. If you are leading a team, ask for input for your people and consult others in your organization or those who have run similar projects. Now, estimate risk. What is estimate risk? Once you have identify the threats you are facing, you need to calculate uh, both the likelihood of these threats being realized and their possible impact. One way of doing this is to make your best estimate of the probability of the event occurring and then to multiply this by the amount it will cost you to set things right if it happens. Now, this gives this can give you value for the risk. 
Now, avoid the risk. In some cases, you may want to avoid the risk altogether. This could mean not getting involved in a business venture, passing on a project or skipping a high risk activity. This is a good option when taking the risk involves no advantage to your organization or when the cost of addressing the effects is not worthwhile. Now, share the risk to minimize or neutralize the risk. You could also opt to share the risk and the potential gain with other people, teams, organization or third party. For instance, you share risk when you ensure your office building and your inventory with the third party insurance company or when your partner with uh, another organization in a joint product development initiative accept the risk. And the last option is to accept the risk. This option is usually best when there is nothing you can do to prevent or mitigate a risk. When the potential loss is less than the cost of ensuring against the risk or when the potential gain is worth accepting the risk. Now, for example, you might accept the risk of a project launching late if the potential sales will still cover your cost. Now, controlling risk, if you choose to accept the risk, there are a number of ways through which you can control like big business experiments, effective ways you can reduce risk and one of the very important is preven preventative action involves aiming to prevent high risk situation from happening and it includes health and safety training, farewell protection on corporate services and cross training your team. And detective action involves identifying the points in a process where something could go wrong and then putting a steps in place to fix the problem promptly if they occur. Detective actions include double checking finance reports, conducting safety testing before a product is released or installing sensors to detect product defects. Now inform your goal setting with your SOT analysis that is a strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Set goals that exploit your strengths, minimize your weaknesses, realize your opportunities and control the threats you face. And having set the major goal in your life, identify the first step in each and make sure it is very small step, perhaps taking no more than an hour to complete. Now level 3, consciously skilled. At this level, you know that you have acquired the skills and knowledge you need. You put your learning into practice regularly and you gain even more confidence as you use your new skills. Now, you still need to concentrate when you perform these activities, but as you get more practice and experience, these activities become increasingly automatic. To move successfully through level 3, look for opportunities to use your skills as often as you can. Now, for example, you could volunteer for projects that require your new skills or craft your job to use these skills more often in your current role. Now, level 4, unconsciously skilled and at this level, you use your new skill effortlessly and you perform tasks without conscious effort. You are completely confident of success. Once you master one set of skills, it is important to learn more if you want to continue to grow. So, a good way to do this is to teach these new skills to others in your organization. This will keep information fresh in your mind, deepen your understanding of the material and give you a rewarding way to pass this knowledge on to others. Now, please take care of the fact that you may go backwards down the ladder if you do not use your new skills regularly. For example, driving a car is the finest example of this state of mind. When one first learns driving manually, one very quickly feels the difficulty as to how to conscious competence. And with constant practice, 
one can start to think one's ways through it, the unconscious competence. This is the automatic after some practice. With practice, the strict shift becomes a habit for the learner and one can drive without thinking, shifting gears effortlessly, thinking something else than the driving while driving. That is unconscious competence. And this is very true if somebody teaches you that this is gear, this is clutch, this is accelerator, this is brake. Well, you are very conscious, but you do not have any practice. You will have that kind of incompetence while driving the car. But if you are having practice every day for driving the car, you will drive the car unconsciously with all competence, with effortlessly using all the tools. Now, there are four levels, but one fifth level is also there that is mastery. And as the term is mastery of anything requires a minimum of two passes through the four learning stages. The four learning stages, I mean after completion of those four learning stages, naturally the mastery comes as we were discussing about the driving skill. Because when you put your new skill that you know into practice, only then you can retain the skill you have learnt and you will gain mastery in that. Now, we all know that once we become unconscious competence, uh, the only way to have both unconscious competence and conscious competence at the same time is to go back to school and relearn everything a second time. It can't happen otherwise. And what people find when and if they do this is that first we spend almost no time in unconscious incompetence. That is true. Try to find out where you are at fault to get it right. And the second time through and also the time it takes to go through conscious incompetence back into conscious competence is much shorter the second. But just because it is faster the second time does not make this process any less necessary. So, we reapproach the details of the skills we become great at doing and we relearn those details. And yes, they make more sense this time. That is true, you write something the first draft and when after some time you read it and you revise it, you will find several limitations. You will improve it. But everyone who does this has some rude awakening because doing this inevitably brings our attention to details we did not realize we had forgotten during our pursuit of unconscious competence. So, it is incredibly valuable for everyone when we do this process. Fresh students will need those details and if we had not gone through this second run through of the learning stages, we might have forgotten to train these to the new students. So, that rediscovery is exactly what happens when we move through the learning stages again. And all the way up to conscious competence and we never lose our unconscious competence as long as we keep practicing it. So, the, these are the four important uh, stages of the competence which we know very consciously that where we are committing mistake and what else we need to learn. And what are these four important stages of competence or incompetence? Well, these are the unconscious incompetence where we are unaware of what we are doing. We do not know that while the second is conscious incompetence where we know that we are no good at it. Comparatively, this is good, conscious incompetence. You are aware of your limitations and lacuna. 
Then the third is conscious competence that is that we know that we cannot do it, but it takes constant concentration that is conscious competence. The, that is to say that you are striving hard to learn something while the fourth is unconscious competence where we know that we can't do it and we can do it without thinking too hard about it. So, you, you have to decide that out of four which one is very important for you to get the self confidence and we have discussed in detail the various stages how to be positive because sometimes what happens in some of these stages we get the negative thinking we get negative thinking getting very powerful in our mind and that forced us to move backward but you have to erase this negative thought and this negative thinking with positive attitude and positive thinking and we have also discussed that to gain the positive thinking we need to develop self confidence and there are several exercises to develop self confidence. To build up self confidence very important first to know yourself and try to be what you are and even you should have the power to accept the I mean failure if you have committed mistakes. These are the traits of a self confident person and even you should have the idea of the possible risk at your way towards success. And when you know the possible risk of I mean maybe coming while you are striving to get success, you may try to refuse those risks or to minimize those risks to achieve the target destination. So, after the completion of all these four important stages, the fifth one is mastery and but mastery means mastery that whether conscious unconscious competence is there and you know about the con con competence and that is why I gave you the example of driving. Driving requires needs, uh, driving requires a number I mean a lot of practice. If you go for practice, I mean regularly you get I mean mastery over how to drive and that is why some of the exercises we learn that what we have learned during our school time. We need to go back again relearning and again we will find that we had limitation that time which we can improve now. Now, with the help of all such states and ideas and philosophy, one can develop self confidence with the positive attitude, with the conscious competence and always trying to learn positive in the li life. I hope that this four stages of competence will definitely help you to improve your personality or to achieve something concrete in your life with the help of neurolinguistic programming. As I am telling you again and again that neurolinguistic programming is a program of controlling the all the I mean uh, stimuli in your behavior in your uh, uh, physical appearance to give the positive one and to give the positive one effect is that your constant constant practice towards learning the new thing. I would like to conclude with all these that you practice and practice to get the finest thing in your life you will feel better. I hope that this uh, lesson is going to develop self confidence in your personality. Overconfidence again is bad, but self confidence is very important even for a small child. To achieve goal in life one has to be very positive and 100 percent sure to get the success. With these words I conclude, thank you very much.